Hey guys, it's Elizabeth. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming at you guys with another episode in my murder mystery series. If you haven't watched any of my other ones, I have two prior episodes that are up on my channel. I will leave them linked in the description box just in case you haven't seen them. The first one is about the Axeman of New Orleans and the second one is about uh, the Villisca Axe Murder House in Villisca, Iowa. And today we are going to be talking about a very, very, very interesting case. It's one of my favorites to learn about, which I know kind of sounds a little weird that I said the word favorite, but I don't really know how else to put it. I just think I find it very interesting to look at all the aspects of the case and everything. So today we are going to be talking about the case of Elizabeth Short, aka better known as the Black Dahlia. Like I said, we're going to be talking about Elizabeth Short. Um, I know we have the same name, kind of. My name's Elizabeth, except it's spelled with an S. Hers is with a Z, and my last name's not short. But I am short. Elizabeth was born in Boston, Massachusetts in 1924, and at the time of her death, she was living in Los Angeles, California, and working as a waitress to support her career um, as an aspiring actress. Her body was found on January 15th, 1947, near Limerick, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but Limerick Park, in Los Angeles, California. So her body was discovered by a female that was just on a normal walk and she noticed something kind of peering out of the bushes and to much of her surprise she found uh, Elizabeth's body. Um, this is really weird for me to talk about because my name is Elizabeth. But she found Elizabeth completely cut in half from the waist up and also very heavily mutilated. She had like a smile met like carved into her mouth. It's really, really disgusting. Um, but it was very clear that whoever did it had at least some sort of medical experience or knew what they were doing because it wasn't like a sloppy, just like cut in half with the saw, threw her in the um on the in the bushes. It was very it was done medically. And she was also uh, completely naked and posed when she was found and she was completely drained of blood and scrubs clean. So the person that did this obviously spent time on it and knew what they were doing, which is disgusting I think, but knew what they were doing and didn't just do it on the spur of the moment type of thing. I'm going to warn you guys, I am going to put some pictures up so you can kind of see it. So they will be kind of um, graphics. So I'm sorry if you guys are kind of squeamish and don't like this type of stuff, look away now, just get off this video, like now. <laughs> Can you imagine being that girl that found her body? That would be so scary <laughs> if you're just walking down the street and you're like, what is it? And found a girl cut in half and mutilated naked on the side of the road. There are tons of movies and TV shows that use her story and her name and her face in them. An example I used in my first murder mystery series video, the one about the Axeman in New Orleans, the show American Horror Story uses him in one of their seasons. American Horror Story also uses the Black Dahlia in the very first season, Murder House. Um, they pretty much play it to a T, like how she was found, um, how she... pretty much everything. <laughs> there were tons of people who falsely claimed that they murdered her and said that they did it and they were responsible but those all checked out and weren't they were fake no one that confessed to the murder were actually responsible after a while everything was just kind of like dismissed and there were no um actual real suspects of the murder and eventually over time people just kind of forgot about it okay so this is really interesting in 2003 a man by the name of steve hodell came out and said that he suspects that his own father killed Elizabeth Short. So, in 1999, his father passed away, so he was going through some of his old belongings and pictures and stuff, and came across two photographs that strangely resembled Elizabeth Short, and he believes that they were pictures of her. He also thinks that his father was responsible for up to 10 women's disappearances and deaths in the late 1940s before he fled to Asia. The, among those women, he also thinks that his dad was responsible for the death of Jean Spangler, who was an actress, a 26-year-old actress, who may have been seeking an abortion at the time of her disappearance. And at the time, 
George Hodel was the only LA-based doctor who was performing abortions. He told CBS in 2004 that him and his siblings were not allowed in this specific secret room in their house and he figured that he kind of put two and two together and figures that maybe that his dad was hiding bodies in there or disposed of them nearby, something along those lines. Steve returned to the house in 2012 with a cadaver dog to do some sniffing around and the dog found um, evidence, possible evidence of human decomposition in several areas of the house. The soil sample from behind the house and this came back last year positive for human remains. Hodel wants to keep doing his investigation and looking more into the house, but the LAPD has refused to look into it any farther. And Steve also thinks that his father may have been the Zodiac Killer. I know. There's not very much evidence for that, that's just something that he believes as well. Pretty much, I guess, his whole overall theory is that maybe Elizabeth Short was looking to have an abortion like some of the other young women and just kind of went to go on the low about it to just a local doctor and maybe something went wrong and his dad had to dispose of the body somehow or maybe he did it on purpose because obviously he knew what he was doing if he decapitated the body, heavily mutilated it, I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain, it's also hard to debunk or say that it's true. It's just a very very hard and weird case to talk about and I don't know if this guy is just making all of this up or if he really does have a little bit more insight on it. It's this, this Steve Hodel's um, theory is taken a little bit more serious than the other confessions that there has been just because when they did go to the house there were uh, evidence of human remains there and he has vivid stories from his childhood not being able to go into this specific room and it's just it's definitely weird if his father wasn't responsible for the Black Dahlia, he, I think he was responsible for at least something going down that was not right. I also forgot to mention that Steve Hodo is actually a retired police detective, so that's how he has been carrying out his research and everything. So that's all I'm going to touch on today. If you guys have any other information that I missed, leave it in the description box below because I am sure that I missed something. It's definitely a very interesting and in-depth case but yeah that's pretty much it let me know what other murder mystery videos you would like to hear and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you enjoyed and i'll see you guys in the next one bye